This is different. This is different. This is different. Credibility in this particular exchange now. And that's because he described him as a creepy ass cracker? Yes. So it was racial, but it was because Trayvon Martin put race in this. No. You don't think that's a racial comment? No. You don't think that creepy ass cracker? A racial comment? No. Uh, the ultimate goal that these people have in mind, have in mind. is the goal to uh, create a one world government, a one -world government. Mm -hmm. run by the banking industry, run by the bankers. Run by the bankers. Right? There'll, be no There'll be no more cash. And this is getting me straight from Rockefeller himself. This is what they want to accomplish. They want to accomplish. He's the one who told me uh, 11 months before 9 11 ever happened that there was going to be an event. Never told me what the event was going to be. There was going to be an event. There was going to be an event, and it's and there's going to be this war on terror, war on which is no real enemy, no real and the whole thing is a giant hoax, giant you know. But it's a way for the government to take over the American people. 9/11 was done by people in our own government and our own banking system, banking system to perpetuate, to perpetuate the fear of the American people and to subordinating themselves to anything the government wants them to do. That's what it's about, and to create this war, this endless war on terror, endless war on terror, endless war on terror. Be aware, says Radio Southside bosses, its owners and associates take no responsibility for the opinions or statements made by the talk show host or their guests. Statements or show topics are not necessarily the beliefs of the site or the radio station, and opinions between talk show hosts may conflict. This site does not endorse anything as the truth that you will have to judge for yourself. 
but we try to speak the truth on the owner's behalf and reserve the right to question the supposed truth. In this time of misinformation, government-controlled media, and government corruption, it is sometimes hard to get to the truth, but we must try. It is not our intention to libel, discriminate, make hate, or annoy anyone. We believe that it is our constitutional First Amendment right of free speech to voice our opinions and our duty to the Constitution and country to expose the truth. This site takes no responsibility for the opinions of others and the postings of comments in chat rooms or forum posts. What's good, everybody? This your boy, Mr. E, boss of the Southside Bosses, and this is going to be a very, very special, special revolutionary hour where we're definitely going to have to cover the State of the Union Address by Donald J. Trump. See, a lot of people just really be sleep on the matter of what's really going on in our country. A lot of especially black people like to say that, you know, this ain't our country. They ain't make this country for us. This, this, that, that, but that still doesn't change the fact that we live here. That still doesn't change the fact that the policies that they uh, pass here, will they do affect us. And then they, they affect us in the worst way. So that's why we got to actually stay up on this because, uh, you know, I, I found out so much about our laws, policies, ordinances, codes, mandates, things of that nature that, you know, that, that actually shed a lot of light on a situation that uh, everybody suffer up under right now. Uh, and it just um, sometimes you just got to be able to uh, sit back and take in what's really going on. That way you can actually see and, you know, uh, take care of business. Like if you don't understand business ethics or business law or business um, uh, uh, methods, then you really won't understand how to create your own business. But once you understand that, you create your own business and you continue to learn your business, get more successful. And as your business is getting successful, your living standards come up, your money come up, your children come up. You know, uh, these are things that uh, are policies that they pass that can affect your life. So that's why we're going to be... Um, just definitely discussing this uh, State of the Union. I definitely want to cover his lies. I want to cover his uh, accomplishments as well. I hope y'all tune in too. I just want to know what, what, what out, uh, out there, how do y'all feel uh, uh, personally about the State of the Union? What do you think is going on? What we waiting on right now for um, uh, uh, Trump to come in. You know, we got the senators walking in right now. So while we waiting on him to come in, I want to know exactly. Uh, leave us a chat. Uh, leave us a comment. And in about five minutes, we're going to come back and discuss these comments. And we want to see exactly how you feel about the State of the Union. What do you feel? Uh, how do you feel this should? Uh, 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 where is going? Uh, how is this right now? Where is going? And do you think we will survive to 2020? <laughs> and uh, if you got any, I want to know exactly how you feel and why you feel that way too. So don't be shy. Hit us up. You can catch us on sbcmovement.com. Or you can leave a comment at sp uh, spreaker.com forward slash mr underscore e. Just look us up if you can't really find us on there. You can Google us at uh, Southside Bosses or BOSS Radio, baby. Go ahead and follow us on our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can follow and find us on Southside Boss Connection on Instagram, SBC Movement on Twitter, and Southside Boss Connection as well on Facebook. You can also find your boy personally on Instagram at uh, Boss of the Southside Bosses. And go ahead and like uh, and, and follow our uh, Insta new Instagram, Southside Beauty Care, where we're going to have... All, well, we got all types of great uh, uh, cleaning products for you for, to help your skin glow and, glo and gloss, you know, all natural products with none of them skin irritants. So y'all go ahead and follow us at Southside Beauty Care as well. All right, so we're going to go ahead and give y'all a few minutes. Leave us a chat. They already starting to roll in now, so we'll cover a couple, a couple of them in a minute. You know what I'm saying? So y'all got five minutes already. We're going to be playing Die for a Dollar by your boy Julian Lennon here on BOSS Radio, baby. This is the revolutionary hour. Every day trying to get it. We live and die for the dollar. They say money is the roots, get it Feeling like Omar Epps when Pac fell off the roof Got to live with no regrets, what a real nigga do That's cause and effect, some choose to break the rules I'm blessed with the Jews, use the pain as my fuel uh -huh. Ten youngers on the corner pushing work, call them muse Shawty rather catch a dollar, learn that shit in school On the crime, by the bills, rent too much overdue I hear the money calling niggas, it's time to make power moves, power moves. If the streets is what you choose, just know one day your dog may turn on you. 
Your dog may turn on you. For that dollar, I'ma let the angels holler. holler. I see it every day. As young as I hit starving, looking for a better way. Unaware of the knowledge. I know tomorrow ain't promise. I hope God heals calling. We live and die for the dollar. 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 Single mother struggling with two, one in the oven. The pressure's on daddy, not home all of a sudden. She hold it down, wearing a crown. Can't tell her nothing like a jungle makes her wonder how she keep from going under. Convicted felon lost hope on his last appeal. Moving dope to provide his family a decent meal. God, is he wrong for surviving, getting it how he lived? Doing 34, birdie lock behind the cold steel. Working the white man's job, they treat you like a slave. You feel the pain on your back without the whips and chains. This shit ain't designed for you, it's all commercial game. We live and die for the dollar, call it minimum wage. Dear God, these crackers trying to kill us. Bring down Exodus before they squeeze another trigger. Technology brainwashing all my little children, planting bad seeds, corrupting minds by the million. Do you feel it every day? These young as I stop and looking for a better way. Unaware of the knowledge. I know tomorrow ain't promised. I hope God heals calling. We live and die for the dollar. 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 This is the revolutionary album. Oh man, so according to the chat room, man, according to these comments, we are really, really, I ain't even gotta go no further, you know, I ain't really seen no positive comments yet, so I ain't even finna even bother reading out all the way, I just wanna say, Hey, shout out to all y'all out there. Like, y'all, y'all, y'all telling the truth right now. You know, the State of the Union probably ain't really too good right now. So I don't know what he's really going to come in here and really say. He fought for this at well. Pelosi told him that, that, you know what I'm saying? Until you open the government, we ain't going to do it. So he fought for this. So we're really going to see what, he, what he's talking about. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, we definitely keep pushing y'all comments coming in. We're going to be covering this until the end. It's going to be a live uh, commentary to make sure uh, we're going to be discussing everything that he's talking about. If y'all ain't already tuned in to it, like I said, you can follow follow us on Instagram at Southside Boss Connection and Boss of the Southside Bosses. You can also follow us on Twitter at Gutter Baby. That's G U T T A underscore B A B Y, and also SBCMovement.com. I'm sorry, SBC Movement on Twitter. You can find us on Facebook at Southside Boss Connection. Southside Bosses is our group page, and you can find your boy personally, E the Gutter Baby. Just type in one Gutter Baby, and I pop right on up. You know, follow us and show us some love, man. Tune in. With with, uh, chat uh, which uh, I'm sorry, chat with us. <laughs> Let us know what you're thinking about what he got to say. I want to. I'm not going to be just talking. You know what I'm saying? I want to ask. I'm going to be reading comments and everything. So y'all make sure y'all pile them on in because we're definitely going to need a lot to talk about tonight. You feel me? We're going to keep it going right now with your boy Immaculate with Fight to Live, and then after that, we're going to come on and actually get this party started. Uh, by uh, just turning on the news, we're going to let the uh, let it go from there, and you do. You already know what it is. <laughs> this is revolutionary hour, baby. You know how we like to get it. This is the revolutionary hour. I speed the velocity, my lines will blind your vision. The blur that you witness is quickest through my division. Rhymes precision is sharper than the knives on risen. So mind the river as I'm flowing, the mind is liquid. Signs are living as a drop of these minds and bombs. Survive the storm, but you step on the line, you're gone. This is the difference, wanna rip with these lines I'm on. And what is written costs the distance from my lines and yours. Mind the arm, what is scripted, your eyes will fall. And the slumber that you slum under is kind of long. A punishment beats running off a thousand 
boss, a thousand strong. Couldn't run in the bind the storm. When I'm really running, they're running the bind detours. Uh-huh. And the road that I'm on is, is a mind with do. On top of my dicks and so I'm spitting these lyrics at y'all. From the one that's a difficult, lyrical, lyrical world. The pistols are paused, and I'm fighting the badges to fight for the cause. Millions of all, but the prison, the lies, and the grips of their balls. Answer the call when I'm calling the conquering ball. My hunger and dogs are primitive bombs. Pistols are paused, and I'm fighting to finish the cause. Millions of all, but the prison, the lies, and the grips of their balls. Answer the call when I'm calling the conquering ball. My hunger and dogs are primitive bombs. Being is something stupendous. The mic is my interest. I write with a vengeance, and I write to it right to my ignorance. I write with a sentence, so I judge by the light that's submitted. I'm like my percentage, and the lyrics is like when they visit. At night, I'm diminished as my curtain they close in the dark. Praying for the hardest to choke with the brightest spark. Seeking the sight of the angel or the water from arcs. And to the depth of his bosom or the fire with sharks. A vibe of the heart, staying true with the things in my heart. Some of the things I finished never tended to start. Blowing my part with the lyrics I reap in my heart. Cause Immaculate finally had it with just playing the part. Each one that I'm crepping is a different depression. From a weapon down a pressing to a godless suggestion. A common connection, one addressing a common selection. Though what is common is a common, so it's common conviction. But pistols are paused, and I'm fighting the badge just to fight for the cause. Millions of all, but the prison the lies in the grips of their balls. Answer the call when I'm calling the conquering ball. My hunger and dogs are primitive pawns. Pistols are paused, and I'm fighting to finish the cause. Millions of all, but the prison the lies in the grips of their balls. Answer the call when I'm calling the conquering ball. My hunger and dogs are primitive pawns. My club. This is the 
revolutionary album. Already, already, you already know what it is, your boy Mr. E, we covering the State of the Union address, it looks like we got another eight minutes, so we're about to come on, you know, they're just talking already, right now we're going to be covering the State the state of the Union through CBS News, so I do want to reach out and make sure I give them their props, you know, because they're going to be the ones that's actually covering it, uh, we're just going to be commentating on the coverage of the State of the Union, so make sure y'all stay tuned, because it's definitely going to be getting live. But right now, I do want to, I just got another question for everybody. Um, with the way that the wall is going, that he, you know, he, he promised that Mexico would pay for it. Then he turned around and said that uh, uh, that he would get somebody to, uh, to he, 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 the, he said, first he said Mexico was going to pay for it. Then he said he's going to get, re, we were going to get reimbursed by Mexico. And, you know, now it's just all about, he, he shut down the, um, he shut it down just so that they can, uh, so he can get what he wants. But, uh, you know, it's just amazing how we have come this far, you know, but this is just part of it being a deal breaker, you know what I'm saying? Not saying he's a good deal breaker, not saying he has anything like that, but, uh, you know, just the fact that, you know, you, you promised something and you couldn't deliver on your biggest promise of your campaign campaign speech, you know what I'm saying? Um, and it's it kind of it's kind of hard to see you as a leader. Oh, excuse me, I'm going to cut this down. I'm getting uh, lit up right now. Everybody want to get on the show, you know. <laughs> Everybody want to get on the show. But uh, anyways, uh, you, you can't deliver on your main campaign promise. That means that in, with 2020 coming up and a new election or whatnot, it's just, you know, it's going to be very hard for you to actually get that, uh, get that, uh, get, you know, get people to actually vote for you again. So you're looking to get a second term, so that's why you're pushing for the wall right now. And you're going to fight for it until you get, but at the same time, while you're doing that, it's also hurting us in another era, area of, uh, I wonder what happened, what's going on here? Netflix. No, we don't want Netflix. Is this a commercial? Anyways, uh, no wonder. Uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and fix this real quick. A little, but anyways, when you see what's really going on with the, with the border wall, you can actually see that he really didn't have a good plan in the motion. He, he, he activated people's sensationalism. And when he did that, that's how he ended up getting elected, is that he, he based off of people's emotions. You know, uh, that is always bad. Whenever you make a decision out of emotions, you always, you know, it always turns out to be bad. So that's why I always tell people, you know, you know, leave your emotions, especially my children. I'll tell them, leave the emotions at the door. You know, because when you, you, when you act on emotions, you end up making bad decisions. And if you don't know who bad, what a bad decision is, yeah, they get Donald J. Trump. And I ain't even talking about him becoming the president. I'm talking about his mama not swallowing and not. And, <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to say it, but it's true. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they should have decided to get an abortion, but they made a decision based off of love. And now we're stuck with the 40th president of the United States, pretty much shitting on the United States. Even though he, I, I can't take. I don't want to take anything away from him. He has done some good things, such as, like I mentioned, prison reform. You all know that Meat Mills had a uh, had a. Uh, been uh, incarcerated and have actually been on lockdown for a very, very long time. All of his, all of his adult life over something that's minuscule. You know what I'm saying? It shouldn't even be even uh, uh, anything supposed to be batting the eye at right now, especially since the shit is legal. Uh, but at the time, it wasn't legal, so they decided just to keep him on him, especially now that he's making money. And I know y'all heard about 21 Savage and his deportation. Now, I do want to admit, I want to, I want to touch on this as well. 21 Savage was an illegal immigrant. He was. His visa expired. And this is actually a, to show you why we don't need the border wall because this is how most people come into America and become illegal immigrants. They get here on a visa, then the visa expire, and they have to go through the legal procedures in order to become uh, legal again. But at the same time, it's such a long process. And that's what happened with 21 Savage. Now, what also happened to 21 Savage, the reason why he got deported, was because he called a felony uh, charge. We got to take that into account. If he would have never caught that felony charge, he probably would have never been deported in the first place. Well, he wouldn't have been deported in the first place because that, the, the, the disqualifier for his deportation or his disqualifier for him getting that visa again was the felony. 
So that's why they came and picked them up after they got the money from them. But see, this is another thing. If it is about that, if it is because they seen a young black man getting money, why didn't they continue to let, uh, uh, let him be a United States citizen and just get him for taxes? Like they get the rest of us. Only he's making a lot more money, so he's going to be paying taxes. He's never going to get any money back. No, the United States government would never have to pay him. He would never get a tax refund. He would be paying taxes. And that just shows you right there that I don't, that, well, it shows me. Can't be a conspiracy on that. Uh, you can't really blame Trump for that. You know what I'm saying? It was something that 21 Savage, as a man, should have went and got handled, you know. Uh, and he didn't. He did. He made a mistake. Not try to point fingers in and try to say he's a bad person because he didn't do it. All I'm saying is that he, he slipped up. And as an uh, adult, when you slip up and make mistakes like that, there are grown-up consequences. And that's all I got to say about that. But we're two minutes out, so let's go ahead and pump this up. Go ahead and get CBS in. Pump it so we can start covering his... Oh, there go Melania. So, yeah, let me go ahead and definitely do this. Melania is supposed to be bringing uh, a Trump that's not related to them. But, yeah, that's, there you go. If you're watching right now, you're just seeing how she just uh, stopped by him and her, her, the little boy and his sister. I guess that's the other Trump family. Now, this is my thing about that. You're bringing him here to show that how all this is starting uh, to get children bullied just because they got a last name Trump. Why don't we talk about, uh, see, they would have been better off coming on and talking about their base attacking people because they're not Trump supporters. That would have been a better, uh, you know, a better ploy, a better tactic to go with because now you're showing the side that hates you that you're, you're still rooting for them. Even though he said that it was very good, for very fine people on bad sides, pretty much saying that the white supremacists were still right, very fine people. Right, the first lady's people. taking her seat there. It's interesting. That, that's just what I'm saying. You should have uh, reached out uh, and did it the oh, other way around instead of the way you did. All you're doing is showing me that you want you want people to stop picking on the Trump. Right? We, we Which, yeah, yeah, we okay. can go with that, but it, it's not where, helping your case. It's interesting that the occasion, like the time that she drifts into politics. The, the, the one time she got involved in a White House staffing issue, right. <laughs> the reporting was so immediate and visceral. Then you find out that actually what happened was kind of standard issue. This is how things were resolved. Why, people don't want to hear that. The, this, this couple, this they're so media magnetic. Everything is boom. Yeah. Right. You see members of the president's cabinet. Let's go ahead and listen. You might hear my door close every now and again. Uh, I'm sipping on a couple of margaritas. Might have to go to refill. I might have to get a refill. <laughs> but you're still going to be able to tune in and listen to every, or word for word everything that this band has to say. Captain is coming in. It's amazing that this <laughs> a lot of people that started off with Donald Trump that's watching this from jail right now. <laughs> Michael Cohen, you know, all the boys, they, they all watching it from jail right now. Too bad. And this motherfucker, Ben Carson. Ain't got no problem with him being a Republican, but good God, man, you gotta get some personality. All right, as we continue to watch that members of the president's cabinet, there, of course, is Homeland Security Secretary. There was uh, Kirsten Nielsen. That is Elaine Chow that uh, we are seeing there. Of course, we're waiting for the president here uh, at Still any moment to at enter the eight that o'clock. house chamber. But, uh, he on CPT, man. This dude on CPT. So he's starting on bad already. It's going to be one thing. You already know he's going to come uh, on here and say, yeah, uh, why are y'all here so early? Oh, there. I'm on time. Why are y'all here so early? Y'all here 15 minutes early. No motherfucker, this is supposed to start at 8. <laughs> with the Justice Department and the Mueller investigation in particular, but that is likely something we will not be hearing about oh, no, as the president talk about it. takes uh, the podium there to uh, make this State of the Union address, as we've been discussing all night. 
many, many reasons, uh, Leslie and Michael, why the, the president, while that investigation certainly looms large, it is not something the president uh, benefits from to raise, especially not in a forum and especially not with an immediate audience like this where uh, Democrats are in the majority in the House. It's, it, it, that's very true, Lane, and having been to many of, of these, you know, obviously not inside the chamber. Right. Well, actually, uh, that's different. But the, the point is that it's very intimate in there when you are in there with all, in the most powerful people uh, in, in one area. And, but the president knows, and, and they know. Oh, and speaking I, I had to. Be, I got to make sure this to is the long, country. Especially they're, for all my they're trying Texas to. Well, they if have anything that happens there, to anybody, really everybody, everybody, to everybody in this room, on those bigger uh, ideals go, and, and uh, 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 Rick Perry will be up as president. He's the designated the survivor. For the next the Republican Year. Party. And, uh, and, and get some consensus <laughs> along the way. And so we right, we're going to get Texas back like in the White House. Political theater. Well, this is a perfect example of that. There's a, there's a really strong a sense of being a, a proud American when you're there in that room. And I think that's fundamentally what I can't, you can't not get excited when you're there. Uh, yeah, you regardless can. of how you got there, it's, a, it's an awe-inspiring thing to be in that room. What about that, Michael? I mean, the atmosphere here, and we know, as we were talking about earlier, how much the president is attuned to visuals and right. uh, stagecraft and sort of choreography. And this is, in our American political tradition, perhaps one of the most choreographed moments right. uh, in our history. Um, so Larry Sabato was on earlier right. talking about how media have changed, how these are viewed. Uh, Calvin Coolidge is the first to broadcast over the radio, <laughs> bring it into your home. Right. Then, I saw a meme uh, earlier saying uh, Melania also, Trump always Nikki looking Jay like she recognizes you but just don't know where well, from. Reagan, <laughs> to another level. But now we're in the yeah, scenario where like, I know all these people are. That I watch my CBS well, why are they all here right now? Around. And I think it's, that, that's changed. I wonder if the pomp and circumstance has the same impact on a generation whose primary media have been internet and digital. I don't know that it's the same as it was for my parents. All right, let's go ahead and listen in. Everybody running this. I know y'all don't like this food. Why are we acting like that? It's amazing how much. See, this is why I don't trust the politicians. They be on news talking cash shit, and then it comes down to meeting this man in person, and now they all want to run and shake his hand, clapping and shit. I wish I would have been able to cover the Obama all. Uh, uh, State of the Union address just to be able to do comparison, you know? Alright, so before you start talking, I do want to uh, say one thing, and y'all just take it. This radio, Southside Bosses, its owners and associates take no responsibility for the opinions or statements made by the talk show host or their guests. Statements or show topics are not necessarily the beliefs of the site or the radio station, and opinions between talk show hosts may conflict. This site does not endorse anything as the truth that you will have to judge for yourself, but we try to speak the truth on the owner's behalf and reserve the right to question the supposed truth. In this time of misinformation, government-controlled media, and government corruption, it is sometimes hard to get to the truth, but we must try. It is not our intention to libel, discriminate, make hate, or annoy anyone. We believe that it is our constitutional First Amendment right of free speech to voice our opinions and our duty to the Constitution and country to expose the truth. This site takes no responsibility for the opinions of others and the postings of comments in chat rooms or forum. Right, because see, I, I got a lot to talk about, and Trump does too. So I just want to make sure y'all understand that a lot of these are my opinions, but we are going to be stating a lot of facts. The facts, that, the opinions that are based off of facts. So now we got the State of the Union. He's up at the uh, podium. So you're going to hear, like I said, I'm commenting live, so you'll hear me, but we're going to you know, let him 
Shake hands with Pelosi. Shake hands with his vice president and let him get to it. Remember, I want to read your comments and let us know what's going on. That was a lot of fake clap. Madam Speaker. That, uh, fake applause. Mr. Vice President, <laughs> members of Congress, the First Lady of the United States. Seriously? My fellow Americans, we meet tonight at a moment of unlimited potential. As we begin a new Congress, I stand here ready to work with you to achieve historic breakthroughs for all Americans. Millions of our fellow citizens are watching us now gathered in this great chamber, hoping that we will govern not as two parties, but as one nation. The agenda I will lay out this evening is not a Republican agenda or a Democrat agenda. It's the agenda of the American people. Are you sure about that? Many of us have campaigned on the same core promises to defend American jobs and demand fair trade for American workers, to rebuild and revitalize our nation's infrastructure, to reduce the price of health care and prescription drugs, to create an immigration system that is safe lawful, modern, and secure, and to pursue a foreign policy that puts America's interest first. There is a new opportunity in American politics if only we have the courage together to seize it. It's not the fact we don't have the courage, we just don't like the way you talk about going through it. Victory is not winning for our party. Victory is winning for our country. One thing I can't say. Sometimes I don't know if he's a Republican or a Democrat, but I'm really pretty, pretty sure he's an independent. That man is all about himself. This year, America will recognize two important anniversaries that show us the majesty of America's mission and the power of American pride. In June, we mark 75 years since the start of what General Dwight D. Eisenhower called the Great Crusade, the Allied liberation of Europe in World War II.
on D-Day, June 6, 1944, 15,000 young American men jumped from the sky and 60,000 more stormed in from the sea to save our civilization from tyranny. Here with us tonight are three of those incredible heroes. Private First Class, Joseph Riley, Staff Sergeant Irving Locker, and Sergeant Herman Zeitchek. We salute you. In 2019, we also celebrate 50 years since brave young pilots flew a quarter of a million miles. Thank you, Buzz. This year, American astronauts will go back to space on American rockets. I didn't know we stopped doing that. Honestly, I didn't. I got to look that up I thought we did go into space on American rockets. In the 20th century, America saved freedom, transformed science, redefined the middle class, and when you get down to it, there's nothing anywhere in the world that can compete with America. And, uh, except for China's econ economy system and uh, education system. So we're going to have to look that up. Different, different ways of the countries kind of outrank us in certain areas. And the reason why we, know, we need to know this is so that now we need to know what we need to work on. boldly and bravely into the next chapter of this great American adventure. And we must create a new standard of living for the 21st century an amazing quality of life for all of our citizens is within reach. We can make our community safer, our family stronger, our culture richer, our faith deeper, and our middle class bigger and more prosperous than ever before. I'm just poking fun right now. Don't, don't mind me on that one. I was just poking fun on that one. <laughs> I damn sure hope people actually get that. There's a lot of work, hard working families out there that need it. But we must reject the politics of revenge, resistance, and retribution, and embrace the boundless potential of cooperation, compromise, and the common good. So is he talking about himself at the border wall? With let, let you see Nancy Pelosi. Oh, you probably can't even listen. But Nancy Pelosi just stood up and pretty much clapped at Trump. Because that's pretty much the same shit that she's been saying about the border wall. Together we can break decades <laughs> of political stalemate. 
We can bridge all divisions, heal old wounds, build new coalitions, forge new solutions, and unlock the extraordinary promise of America's future. The decision is ours to make. We must choose between greatness or gridlock, results or resistance, vision or vengeance, incredible progress or pointless destruction. Tonight, I ask you to choose greatness. Over the last two years, my administration has moved with urgency and historic speed to confront problems neglected by leaders of both parties over many decades. See what I mean by the In just part? over two years since the election, we have launched an unprecedented economic boom, a boom that has rarely been seen before. There's been nothing like it. We have created 5.3 million new jobs and importantly added 600,000 new manufacturing jobs, something which almost everyone said was impossible to do. But the fact is, we are just getting started. Definitely going to look better for the job, bro. Because last time I heard, didn't we just lose the automobile, uh, automobile plant, one of the biggest ones we had? I'm, I'm just saying. We're going to have to look that up. Wages are rising at the fastest pace in decades. Wage growth. And growing for blue collar workers who I promise to fight for, they're growing faster than anyone else thought possible. Nearly 5 million Americans have been lifted off food stamps. 5 million Americans off food stamps. I don't care. Let's definitely want to find out about that. I'm just saying, the same people that I, that I know that was getting them before are still getting them. The food. U.S. economy is growing almost twice as fast today as when I took office. And we are considered far and away the hottest economy anywhere in the world. Not even close. Hottest economy in the world, huh? Unemployment has reached the lowest rate in over half a century. Unemployment, lowest rate in half a century. African American, oh. Hispanic American, and Asian American unemployment have all reached their lowest levels ever recorded. Man, look at you. We got, look, we got have a lot to talk about. This is the first unemployment what, 10 for minutes? Americans with disabilities has also reached an all-time low. Americans with disability? Okay, I see all the ladies in white. Nobody's clapping. People are like, they don't understand what's going are on. Are working now than at any time in the history of our country. 157 million people at work. We passed a massive tax cut for working families and doubled the child tax credit. No. If he did, it wasn't for this year. I just got my taxes done today. <laughs> Real talk. Double the child tax credit. Let me find out what that is. We virtually ended no, the estate so. tax, or death tax, as it is often called, on small businesses for ranches, and also for family farms. Find out about that. And that is something that I thought we started with, huh? But we'll definitely discuss that later. 
We eliminated the very unpopular Obamacare individual mandate penalty. That he did. Just found out about that today. So no longer will you get penalized for not having health insurance. That's something I have to agree with. ill patients access to life-saving cures. We passed, very importantly, right to try. administration has cut more regulations in a short period of time than any other administration during its but entire tenure. that's not necessarily tenure. a good thing. Some of the regulations are put, most of those regulations are put in place to protect the consumer, me and you. If you're a business owner, you will want to ask to get these regulations to Companies uh, are coming back to our country in large numbers. Thanks to our historic reductions in taxes and regulations. See? You notice the applause is low on that. And because we have you, you unleashed a revolution in American energy. The United States is now the number one producer of oil and natural gas anywhere in the world. I don't believe that. We don't have that much oil. That's why we need, that's why we need Kuwait. That's why we need Saudi Arabia. And now, for the that's first time direct. in 65 years, we are a net exporter of energy. Okay, we're going to see what, that, what kind of energy he's talking about. Yeah, it's only the Republicans class of rapid progress. Our economy is the envy of the world. Our military is the most powerful on earth by far. And America... Even the generals like, uh, I guess, <laughs> only one of them started to try to clap. I don't think that's true either. I think the government America shut down with kind of faith in the United States military. And every day. Of the United States. Not in. Of the United States military. Excuse me. Members of Congress, the state of our union is strong. I said the state of the union is strong, huh? You know, I know, I know he hasn't really touched on too much of the actual union. He's talked about the business side of it. He's talked about the corporate side of it. If you notice that, he never really talked about the actual infrastructure of America. He talked that about the corporate so business side of America. Our country is vibrant and our economy is thriving like never before. On Friday it was announced that we added another 304,000 jobs last month alone, almost double the number expected. An economic miracle is taking place in the United States, and the only thing that can stop it are foolish wars, politics, or ridiculous partisan investigations. Oh, Lord. He had to throw that in there, huh? He had to say that. <laughs> he had to say, so stop doing your jobs. Leave me alone. I'm doing all this good stuff. You don't need to know about the other stuff. If there is going to be peace and legislation, there cannot be war and investigation. Man, you is not a pimp. does it work that way. What? We must no. be united at home to ah. defeat our adversaries abroad. Do you understand what I mean by this independent? This new era of cooperation can start with finally confirming the more than 300 highly qualified nominees who are still stuck in the Senate 
In some cases, years and years waiting, not right. This is the body of hell. Seriously, the body. You can tell. The Senate has failed to act on these nominations, which is unfair to the nominees and very unfair to our country. Now is the time for bipartisan action. Believe it or not, we have already proven that that's possible. In the last Congress, both parties came together to pass unprecedented legislation to confront the opioid crisis, a sweeping new farm bill, historic VA reforms, and after four decades of rejection, we passed VA accountability so that we can finally terminate those who mistreat our wonderful veterans. Now, but see, you, you, you think about it, though. All the things that you're talking about, though, is things that, that there should have been no thought behind it. These things that should have been done a long time ago. You cannot compare that to things that have an opinion, such as the border wall. Or you're, you're, you're hanging out ago, with Russians. Both parties united for groundbreaking criminal justice reform. They said it couldn't be done. Again, something else that should have been done since the creation of this country. Last year, I heard through friends the story of Alice Johnson. I was deeply moved. In 1997, Alice was sentenced this is to life guy. in prison I guess. as a first-time nonviolent drug offender. Over the next 22 years, she became a prison minister, inspiring others to choose a better path. She had a big impact on that prison population and far beyond. Alice's story underscores the disparities and unfairness that can exist in criminal sentencing and the need to remedy this total injustice. Why is he she served that? almost that 22 years and had expected to be in prison for the remainder of her life. In June, I commuted Alice's sentence. When I saw Alice's beautiful family greet her at the prison gates, hugging and kissing and crying and laughing, I knew I did something right. Alice is with us tonight. And she is a terrific woman. Terrific. Alice, please. That's nice. That, that, that's, that's wonderful. I don't know why he did it. See, that's what I'm saying. We gotta give him credit for some credit to do. I don't know why he did that. You know, that's the first thing that came to my mind since this is a corporation is that this is a charity. Uh, case right here. Now you call it her charity case, but this you know, they, they do public. Alice, thank you for uh, 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 reminding it? us it's that a, we a, always a have the power relations. to shape our own destiny. Thank you very much, Alice. Thank you very much. Twenty-two years, boy, for something stupid like that. Inspired by That's stories like you. Alice's, my administration worked closely with members of both parties to sign the First Step Act into law. Beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. And don't start, don't start better. This legislation reformed sentencing laws that have wrongly and disproportionately harmed the African-American community. The First Step Act gives nonviolent offenders the chance to re enter society as productive, law abiding citizens. Now, states across the country 
are following our lead. America is a nation that believes in redemption. We are also joined tonight by Matthew Charles from Tennessee. In 1996, at the age of 30, Matthew was sentenced to 35 years for selling drugs and related offenses. Over the next two decades, he completed more than 30 Bible studies, became a law clerk, and mentored many of his fellow inmates. Now Matthew is the very first person to be released from prison under the First Step Act. I can see why he'll be a Trump thing. Matthew, please. That's a beautiful thing, man. Dang, 35 motherfucking years. I'm getting 20 over some bullshit. That was that Bill Clinton shit, 1996. That was that Bill Clinton shit. That's shit. That's when, that's when Bill Clinton was sending Thank black you, people to jail, prison, fast. Welcome home. Now, These are the stories you really don't hear about. And I'm gonna start reporting on Must these. join forces again to confront an urgent national crisis. Congress has 10 days left to pass a bill that will fund our government, protect our homeland, and secure our very dangerous southern border. It's not that dangerous. Now is the time for Congress to show the world that America is committed to ending illegal immigration and putting the ruthless coyotes, cartels, <coughs> drug dealers, and human <coughs> traffickers out of business. Some people look like they hate to be clapping right now. I feel you. Like, damn why this nigga gotta be right, right, right now. <laughs> For real. Like, some of you shaking their head. Well, I understand why they shaking their head. We don't need that board. As we speak, large Organized caravans are on the march to the United States. We have just heard that Mexican cities, in order to remove the illegal immigrants from their communities, are getting trucks and buses to bring them up to our country in areas where there is little border protection. I have ordered another 3,750 troops to our southern border to prepare for this tremendous onslaught. It's always an onslaught. This it's always is a, a moral coming. issue. To the, last one. the lawless state of our southern border is a threat to the safety, security, and financial well-being of all America. We have a moral duty to create an immigration system that protects the lives and jobs of our citizens. This includes our obligation to the millions of immigrants living here today who hey, follow the rules you. You and respected our too. laws. Legal immigrants enrich our nation and strengthen our society in countless ways. We want people to come into our country in the largest numbers ever, but they have to come in legally. And there's so many other, but what are you going to do about the other ways that they come in legally? When we notice that immigration, uh, illegal immigration has Tonight, really slowed down. I'm asking you to defend our very dangerous southern border out of love and devotion to our fellow citizens and to our country. No issue better illustrates the divide between America's working class and America's political class 
than illegal immigration. Wealthy politicians and donors push for open borders while living their lives behind walls and gates and guards. Meanwhile, working class Americans are left to pay the price for mass illegal immigration. Reduced jobs, lower wages, overburdened schools, hospitals that are so crowded you can't get in, increased crime, and a depleted social safety net. Tolerance for illegal immigration is not compassionate. It is actually very cruel. Wow, he, he flipped that. I like how he flipped that, though. I mean, I don't One like what he said, but I like how he flipped that. He sexually assaulted on the long journey north. Smugglers use migrant children as human pawns to exploit our laws and gain access to our country. Human traffickers and sex traffickers take advantage of the wide open areas between our ports of entry to smuggle thousands of young girls and women into the United States and to sell them into prostitution and modern day slavery. Wait, I thought they'd get them out of the United States. Tens of thousands of innocent Americans are killed by lethal drugs that cross our border no. and flood into our cities. No, including opioids don't come from... Heroin, no. cocaine, no. and yeah, fentanyl. Yeah, yeah. No, not heroin. Fentanyl. The savage gang, he just MS-13, said fentanyl, fentanyl is through now your operates <laughs> in at least 20 different American states. <laughs> and they almost all come through our southern border. Just yesterday, an MS-13 gang member was taken into custody for a fatal shooting on a subway platform in New York City. MS-13. We are removing these gang members by the thousands, but until we secure our border, they're going to keep streaming right back in. Year after year, countless Americans are murdered by criminal, illegal aliens. I've gotten to know many wonderful angel moms and dads and families. No one should ever have to suffer the horrible heartache that they have had to endure. Can we talk about the police? Here tonight doing? is Deborah Bissell. Police? Just three weeks ago, Deborah's parents, Gerald and Sharon, were burglarized and shot to death in their Reno, Nevada home by an illegal alien. They were in their 80s and are survived by four children, 11 grandchildren, and 20 great-grandchildren. Also here tonight are Gerald and Sharon's granddaughter, Heather, and great-granddaughter, Madison. To Deborah, Heather, Madison, Please stand. Few can understand your pain. Thank you, and thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Sensationalism. Emotionalism. I feel sorry for what they went through. They should never have to go through it. But that's not the narrative. I will that never forget. Is the common is and the I will that's fight the for the memory yeah. of Gerald and Sharon that it should never happen again. Not one more American life should be lost because our nation failed to control its very dangerous border. In the last two years, our brave ICE officers made two hundred and sixty six thousand arrests of criminal aliens 
including those charged or convicted of nearly 100,000 assaults, 30,000 sex crimes, and 4,000 killings or murders. We are joined tonight by one of those law enforcement heroes, ICE Special Agent Elvin Hernandez. I ain't a special agent anymore. When Elvin... Well, that's right, the field agent. <laughs> Everybody know who you is, Elvin. As a boy, he and his family legally immigrated to the United States oh. from the Dominican Republic. At the age of eight, Elvin told his dad he wanted to become a special agent. Today, he leads investigations into the scourge of international sex trafficking. Elvin says that if I can make sure these young girls get their justice. I've really done my job. Thanks to his work and that of his incredible colleagues, more than 300 women and girls have been rescued from the horror of this terrible situation. And more than 1,500 sadistic traffickers have been put behind bars. support the brave men and women of law enforcement. And I pledge to you tonight that I will never abolish our heroes from ICE. Thank you. My administration has sent to Congress a common-sense proposal to end the crisis on the southern border. It includes humanitarian assistance, more law enforcement, drug detection at our ports, closing loopholes that enable child smuggling, and plans for a new physical barrier or wall to secure the vast areas between our ports of entry. In the past, most of the people in this room voted for a wall, but the proper wall never got built. I will get it built. This is a smart, strategic, see-through steel barrier, not just a simple concrete wall. It will be deployed in the areas identified by the border agents as having the greatest need. And these agents will tell you where walls go up, illegal crossings go way, way down. The 5.7 blues. San Diego used to have the most illegal border crossings in our country. In response, a strong security wall was put in place. This powerful barrier almost completely ended illegal crossings. The border city of El Paso, Texas, used to have extremely high rates of violent crime, one of the highest in the entire country and considered one of our nation's most dangerous cities. Now, immediately upon its building, with a powerful barrier 
in place. El Paso is one of the safest cities in our country. Simply put, walls work and walls save lives. So let's work together, compromise, and reach a deal that will truly make America safe. As we work to defend our people's safety, we must also ensure our economic resurgence continues at a rapid pace. No one has benefited more from a thriving economy than women who have filled 58% of the newly created jobs last year. And he got the ladies in white jumping up. You got Nancy Pelosi as well. Oh, I missed it. You weren't supposed to do that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All Americans can be proud that we have more women in the workforce than ever before. That was going to happen regardless. That kind of something that happens every year. You know, more and more women uh, going to the workforce. Don't sit yet. You know, like this. And exactly one century after Congress passed the constitutional amendment giving women the right to vote, we also have more women serving in Congress than at any time before. You know what, though? You actually can thank Donald J. Trump for that. Because of him, it made a need for a pushback. He is the ripple effect. I mean, this is the ripple effect of his presidency. Not saying that women wouldn't have got their victory, but this is, he is the reason now that this happened. It would have had to be a reason, and who would have thought, right? <laughs> wow. High school? Hip rally? <laughs> That's great. Very good. And congratulations. That's great. As part of our commitment to improving opportunity for women everywhere, this Thursday, we are launching the first ever government-wide initiative focused on economic empowerment for women in developing countries. To build on... To build on our incredible economic success, one priority is paramount. Reversing decades of calamitous trade policies. So bad. We are now making it clear to China that after years of targeting our industries and stealing our intellectual property, the theft of American jobs and wealth has come to an end. recently imposed tariffs on $250 billion of Chinese goods, and now our Treasury is receiving billions and billions of dollars. But I don't blame China for taking advantage of us. I blame our leaders 
and representatives for allowing this travesty to happen. I have great respect for President Xi, and we are now working on a new trade deal with China. But it must include real structural change to end unfair trade practices, reduce our chronic trade deficit, and protect American jobs. Another historic trade blunder was the catastrophe known as NAFTA. I have met the men and women of Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Indiana, New Hampshire, and many other states whose dreams were shattered by the signing of NAFTA. For years, politicians promised them they would renegotiate for a better deal. But no one ever tried until now. Our new U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement, the USMCA, will replace NAFTA and deliver for American workers like they haven't had delivered to for a long time. I hope you can pass the USMCA into law so that we can bring back our manufacturing jobs in even greater numbers, expand American agriculture, protect intellectual property, and ensure that more cars are proudly stamped with our Four beautiful words, made in the USA. Tonight, I am also asking you to pass the United States Reciprocal Trade Act so that if another country places an unfair tariff on an American product, we can charge them the exact same tariff on the exact same product that they sell to us. Both parties should be able to unite for a great rebuilding of America's crumbling infrastructure. But the State of the Union is strong. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm missing something here. I mean, I did say he didn't talk about the infrastructure of America. I know He's talking about it now. I know eager to pass an infrastructure bill, and I am eager to work with you on legislation to deliver new and important infrastructure investment, including investments in the cutting-edge industries of the future. This is not an option. This is a necessity. The next major priority for me and for all of us should be to lower the cost of health care and prescription drugs and to protect patients with pre-existing conditions. result of my administration's efforts in 2018, drug prices experienced their single largest decline in 46 years. Okay, see, I just heard something else earlier. So we're going to definitely look that up. Definitely look up the, the but prescription we must do price more. in 2018. It's unacceptable that Americans pay vastly more than people in other countries for the exact same drugs, often made in the exact same place. Yeah. This is wrong. This is unfair. And together, we will stop it. Yeah, we'll think stop it fast. I know this because we asked to go to Mexico to get some, <laughs> uh, well, to fill a prescription. You know, but we weren't allowed to cross with that prescription because the prescription was in my homeboy's mom's name. 
and, and she was too sick to go to Mexico to spend a little bit of money that she gets on her finally set takes on income the problem of global every year, freeloading I mean, every month. And delivers fairness and price transparency for American patients, finally. We should also require drug companies, insurance companies, and hospitals to disclose real prices to foster competition and bring costs way down. No force in history has done more to advance the human condition than American freedom. In recent years, in recent years, we have made remarkable progress in the fight against HIV and AIDS. Scientific breakthroughs have brought a once distant dream within reach. My budget will ask Democrats and Republicans to make the needed commitment to eliminate the HIV epidemic in the United States within 10 years. We have made incredible I think that's more important than that wall, ain't it? Wouldn't that be more important than that wall? If not, am I missing something? Together we will defeat AIDS in America and beyond. Yeah, go ahead and take Dr. CB's and cure and make you millions more dollars. All Americans can get behind the fight against childhood cancer. There we go. I'm liking that. I'm liking that. Joining Melania in the gallery this evening is a very brave 10-year-old girl, Grace Eline. Every birthday, birthday since she was four, Grace asked her friends to donate to St. Jude's Children's Hospital. She did not know that one day she might be a patient herself. That's what happened. Last year, Grace was diagnosed with brain cancer. Immediately, she began radiation treatment. At the same time, she rallied her community and raised more than forty thousand dollars for the fight against cancer. I'm starting to notice that when it came to when Grace Justice completed reform, treatment last fall. The two that her doctors were picked and nurses to cheered. represent that were black people, and her. ever since then, it's been nothing but white With people tears in their eyes used as to she hung show up an example a of the poster story. that read, Last Day of Chemo. Okay. She's a beat it. That's what's up. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Grace. You are a great inspiration to everyone in this room. Thank you very much. 
Many childhood cancers have not seen new therapies in decades. My budget will ask Congress for $500 million over the next 10 years to fund this critical life-saving research to help support working parents. The time has come to pass school choice for Americans' children. proud to be the first president to include in my budget a plan for nationwide paid family leave so that every new parent has the chance to bond with their newborn child. That's, what's up. that's, that's actually something that's needed. But I think that it should be for paternity leave too, shouldn't it? There could be no greater contrast to the beautiful image of a mother holding her infant child than the chilling displays our nation saw in recent days. Lawmakers in New York cheered with delight upon the passage of legislation that would allow a baby to be ripped from the mother's womb moments from birth. These are living, feeling, beautiful babies who will never get the chance to share their love and their dreams with the world. And then we had the case of the governor of Virginia, where he stated he would execute a baby after birth. Wow. To defend the dignity of every person, I am and asking he was a Democrat. Congress to pass legislation to prohibit the late term abortion of children who can feel pain in the mother's womb. Right. That was horrible. I'm actually on his side with this one. For y'all that don't know about the late term abortion bill that got passed in Virginia, you really need to look it up because it's some real shit. Women are now given the opportunity and I know look, women, the women, the new women in Congress, they don't like this. They think it's stupid that you would kill a baby. Because the third Let trimester that's together a baby. to build a culture that cherishes innocent life. It's like they're giving they're giving these women the legal right to be murderers. I'm sorry. I, I, hey, when it comes to the first and second trimester, that's the, that's enough to be for the, for the 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 experts. But we all know that when it comes to that third trimester or right before birth, that baby is a baby. And let us reaffirm a fundamental truth. All children, <clears throat> born and unborn, are made in the holy image of God. The final part of my agenda is to protect American security. Over the last two years, we have begun to fully rebuild the United States military with $700 billion last year and $716 billion this year. We are also getting other nations to pay their fair share. Finally. For years, the United States was being treated very unfairly by friends of ours, members of NATO. But now we have secured, over the last couple of years, more than $100 billion of increase in defense spending from our NATO allies. They said it couldn't be done. A state of the art <laughs> missile defense system. Under my administration, we will never apologize for advancing 
America's interests. For example, decades ago, the United States entered into a treaty with Russia in which we agreed to limit and reduce our missile capability. While we followed the agreement and the rules to the letter, Russia repeatedly violated its terms. Here's a question. It's been going on for many years. Is he bringing this up now that to divert attention? That is why I announced attention? that the United States is officially withdrawing from the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, or INF Treaty. Perhaps... Pretty much getting ready for war. Not saying he's going to go to war. We really have no choice. But that is a part of getting Perhaps ready for we war. can negotiate a different agreement, adding China and others. Or perhaps we can't. In which case, we will outspend and out innovate all Pelosi. others by far. Don't like that. Most of the like Why do we got to go that way? Why can't. I mean, you say that now, but... As part of a bold new diplomacy, we continue our historic push for peace on the Korean Peninsula. Our hostages have come home. Nuclear testing has stopped. And there has not been a missile launch in more than 15 months. If I had not been elected president of the United States... We would right now, in my opinion, be in a major war with North Korea. Wow. Wow. I, I, I thought it was him that called him Rocket Man. I thought it was him that actually started to be. Much work remains to be done. But my relationship on, irritated that shit. with Kim Jong-un is a good one. Chairman Kim and I will meet again on February 27th and 28th in Vietnam. Two weeks ago, the United States officially recognized the legitimate government of Venezuela and its new president, Juan Guaido. We stand with the Venezuelan people in their noble quest for freedom and we condemn the brutality of the Maduro regime, whose socialist policies have turned that nation from being the wealthiest in South America into a state of abject poverty and despair. Now, to be fair, that the, the United States CIA has something to do with that, Here too. in the United States, we are alarmed by the new calls nah, you, to adopt we, socialism we wasn't in our alarmed. country. We wasn't alarmed. We wasn't alarmed at all. America was founded on liberty and independence and not government coercion, domination, and control. That's a lie. We are born free <laughs> and we will stand that, I'm not even going to look that up. That's a lie. It was born on exactly government coercion. Tonight, we renew our resolve that America will never be a socialist country. According to the Constitution, we're not even supposed to be a democracy. But what do I know? One of the most complex set of challenges we face and have for many years is in the Middle East. Our approach is based on principle realism, not discredited theories that have failed for decades to yield progress. 
For this reason, my administration recognized the true capital of Israel and proudly opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. troops have now been fighting in the Middle East for almost 19 years. In Afghanistan and Iraq, nearly 7,000 American heroes have given their lives. More than 52,000 Americans have been badly wounded. We have spent more than $7 trillion in fighting wars in the Middle East. As a candidate for president, I loudly pledged a new approach. Great nations do not fight endless wars. This nation has been in a war almost every year since its founding. When I took office, ISIS controlled more than 20,000 square miles in Iraq and Syria just two years ago. Today, we have liberated virtually all of the territory from the grip of these bloodthirsty monsters. Now, as we work with our allies to destroy the remnants of ISIS, it is time to give our brave See, warriors the, in Syria the generals even a warm welcome that home. The ISIS is not defeated. I have also <laughs> accelerated our negotiations to reach, if possible, a political settlement in Afghanistan. The opposing side is also very happy to be negotiated. Our troops have fought with unmatched valor and thanks to their bravery we are now able to pursue a possible political solution to this long and bloody conflict that is something everybody can agree with In Afghanistan, my administration is holding constructive talks with a number of Afghan groups, including the Taliban. As we make progress in these negotiations, we will be able to reduce our troops' presence and focus on counterterrorism. And we will indeed focus on counterterrorism. We do not know whether we'll achieve an agreement. But we do know that after two decades of war, the hour has come to at least try for peace. And the other side would like to do the same thing. It's time. Above all, friend and foe alike must never doubt this nation's power and will to defend our people. Eighteen years ago, violent terrorists attacked the USS Cole, and last month, American forces killed one of the leaders of that attack. to be joined tonight by Tom Wibberley, whose son, Navy Seaman Craig Wibberley, <laughs> was one of the 17 sailors we tragically lost. Tom, we vow to always remember the heroes of the USS Cole. Thank you, Tom.
administration has acted decisively to confront the world's leading state sponsor of terror, the radical regime in Iran. It is a radical regime. They do bad, bad things. To ensure this corrupt dictatorship never acquires nuclear weapons, I withdrew the United States from the disastrous Iran nuclear deal. And last fall, we put in place the toughest sanctions ever imposed by us on a country. We will not avert our eyes from a regime that chants death to America and threatens genocide against the Jewish people. never ignore the vile poison of anti-Semitism or those who spread its venomous creed. With one voice, we must confront this hatred anywhere and everywhere it occurs. Just months ago, 11 Jewish Americans were viciously murdered in an anti-Semitic attack on the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh. SWAT officer Timothy Matson raced into the gunfire and was shot seven times chasing down the killer. And he was very successful. Timothy has just had his 12th surgery and he's going in for many more. But he made the trip to be here with us Tonight, Officer Matson, please. Man, not the big European American. But I have yet to see anybody else of any color. forever grateful. Thank you very much. Tonight, we are also joined by Pittsburgh survivor Judah Sabbath. He arrived at the synagogue as the massacre began. But not only did Judah narrowly escape death last fall, more than seven decades ago, he narrowly survived the Nazi concentration camps. Today is Judah's 81st birthday. so sweet. <laughs> they wouldn't do that for me, Judah. No. No. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy funeral to <laughs> Ten months in a concentration camp when he and his family were put on a train and told they were going to another camp. Suddenly, the train screeched to a very strong halt. A soldier appeared. Judah's family braced for the absolute worst. Then his father cried out with joy, it's the Americans, it's the Americans. second Holocaust survivor who was here tonight, Joshua Kaufman, was a prisoner at Dachau. He remembers watching through a hole in the wall of a cattle car as American soldiers rolled in with tanks. To me, Joshua recalls, the American soldiers were proof that God exists and they came down from the sky. They came down from heaven. I began this evening by honoring three soldiers who fought on D-Day in the Second World War. One of them was Hermann Zeitschik. But there is more to Hermann's story. A year after he stormed the beaches of Normandy, Hermann was one of the American soldiers who helped liberate Dachau. one of the Americans who helped rescue Joshua from that hell on earth. Almost 75 years later, Herman and Joshua are both together in the gallery tonight, seated side by side here in the home of American freedom. Herman and Joshua, your presence this evening is very much Appreciate it. Thank you very much. American soldiers set out beneath the dark skies over the English Channel in the early hours of D-Day, 1944. They were just young men of 18 and 19 hurtling on fragile landing craft toward the most momentous battle in the history of war. They did not know if they would survive the hour. They did not know if they would grow old. But they knew that America had to prevail. Their cause was this nation and generations yet unborn. Why did they do it? They did it for America. They did it for us. Everything that has come since our triumph over communism, our giant leaps of science and discovery, our unrivaled progress towards equality and justice. All of it is possible thanks to the blood and tears and courage and vision 
of the Americans who came before. Think of this capital. Think of this very chamber where lawmakers before you voted to end slavery, to build the railroads and the highways and defeat fascism, to secure civil rights and to face down evil empires. Here tonight, we have legislators from across this magnificent republic. You have come from the rocky shores of Maine and the volcanic peaks of Hawaii, from the snowy woods of Wisconsin and the red deserts of Arizona, from the green farms of Kentucky and the golden beaches of California. Did he memorize the speech? Together we represent the most extraordinary nation in all of history. What will we do with this moment? How will we be remembered? I ask the men and women of this Congress, look at the opportunities before us. Our most thrilling achievements are still ahead. Our most exciting journeys still await. Our biggest victories are still to come. We have not yet begun to dream. We must choose whether we are defined by our differences or whether we dare to transcend them. We must choose whether we squander our great inheritance or whether we proudly declare that we are Americans. We do the incredible. We defy the impossible. We conquer the unknown. This is the time to reignite the American imagination. This is the time to search for the tallest summit and set our sights on the brightest star. This is the time to rekindle the bonds of love and loyalty and memory that link us together as citizens, as neighbors, as patriots. This is our future, our fate, and our choice to make. I am asking you to choose greatness. No matter the trials we face, no matter the challenges to come, we must go forward together. We must keep America first in our hearts. We must keep freedom alive in our souls. And we must always keep faith in America's destiny. That one nation under God must be the hope and the promise and the light and the glory among all the nations of the world. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you very much. That was the State of the Union Address by President Donald J. Trump. Now for those that tuned in in the middle of the commentary, we was discuss, uh, uh, covering the State of the Union Address and we really wanted to catch him and multiple lies. So before we continue with that, I have to, you know, I have to do this for my, uh, the, the, the lawyers, you know, strangle you. I'll strangle one of them if I can get away with it, you know. But uh, anyway, to give, I'll be back in one minute. Be your witness radio, Southside Bosses, its owners and associates take no responsibility for the opinions or statements made by the talk show host or their guests. Statements or show topics are not necessarily the beliefs of the site or the radio station, and opinions between talk show hosts may conflict. This site does not endorse anything as the truth that you will have to judge for yourself, but we try to speak the truth on the owner's behalf and reserve the right to question the supposed truth. 
And this time of misinformation, government controlled media, and government corruption, it is sometimes hard to get to the truth, but we must try. It is not our intention to libel, discriminate, make hate, or annoy anyone. We believe that it is our constitutional First Amendment right of free speech to voice our opinions and our duty to the Constitution and country to expose the truth. This site takes no responsibility for the opinions of others and the postings of comments in chat rooms or forum posts. Already, already, you already know. Now, with that being said, I'm actually going to cover a little bit. I ain't going to lie. I'm kind of disappointed. A lot of the things that, you know, he, I, I was actually expecting him to come out and just bolster a lot of uh, claims that, you know, were, that's actually untrue. But that, it wasn't too much that I found that was actually untrue. But we're going to cover a lot of the stuff that, you know, I was taking notes. And we said we was going to give you all the comments. Uh, 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 we was going to break down uh, his speech for, uh, for everybody. You know, but we're going to cover the main ones that I feel like we need to discuss. Now, with that being said, let's get started. Now, uh, he's... <laughs> He said uh, that, in a, that now America is back being number one and everything, so on and so forth. Uh, but it has actually been a known, uh, a, a known fact that America really isn't, hasn't been number one in anything uh, too much in, in uh, decades, if not a century. And, you know, we can cover that with education. We can cover that with... Um, not only just education, but we all can cover that with fight, uh, econ uh, economically, uh, 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 job wise, so on and so forth. Now, I did. Uh, I just wanted to look it up, but it did turn out that the United States dropped one spot to the eighth place in the year's world's ranking of countries by U.S. News and World Report. Now, the, with these, the the U.S. changes are fueled by the world's perceptions of the country becoming less progressive and trustworthy more political unstable and a president who after just one year in office is far more unpopular than any other head of state or company CEO. Now, that right there I want to touch on just a little bit, but you notice how they compare the president of the United States to a company CEO and a head of state. You know, because the simple fact he is both. He is a company CEO and he is a head of a state. And I ain't talking about Trump uh, uh, organized. I'm talking about Obama was even company CEO. Uh, the company being the United States uh, of America. Anyways, it has fallen to the eighth place after being in the seventh place, even when Obama was in office. And they actually can uh, contribute us falling to President Donald J. Trump, who just said that we are number one. Now, he took one year ago and he pledged to make America great again. But then Switzerland, I don't know why we even have to, I don't even know why this even, blow, why this should even blow anybody's minds, but... Switzerland got the number one spot in the best countries in the 2018 list. And it's because of its reputation for citizenship and being open for business. Then Canada got number two, boosted by the best quality of life, driven by high ratings for education, health care, and public safety. Meaning that the United States is losing to Canada in education, Healthcare, which everybody already knows, and public safety. So, this is the same country that's attached to the same land. And we don't have any worries about immigration. We have no, no kind of immigration protection from Canada. And Canada don't have any kind of immigration protection from us. Which makes me wonder, why don't the Mexicans, uh, the, uh, excuse me, the, the Central Americans that immigrate to America... You know what I'm saying? Not saying they can't stay here. Not saying they can't immigrate here. Uh, everybody knows my stand on it. I, I'm all for migration because this was their land first. But why don't they keep going to Canada? It doesn't seem like Canada gives a fuck. You know, they'll be safe in Canada. They can actually get a life in Canada and get started in Canada. Canada is actually created by the, uh, the by England for that reason. I think America was probably supposed to be like that too, but if, you know... People over here get bucket stupid, so. <laughs> but anyways, you know, so Canada has beat us out in education, healthcare, public safety, moving it up to the second spot. Germany, check this out. Germany took the number three spot from Britain, 
who Britain went to the fourth. Now if Germany, Germany is home of Hitler, home of the Nazis, excuse me. This is the birthplace, excuse me, not home. I'm going to take that back. I just called everybody in Germany a Nazi. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. But what I meant was it's the birthplace of Nazism, the birthplace of Hitler. You know, uh, and it got it jumped to the number three spot, got, being five spots over the United States. Then it's followed by Japan, Sweden, Australia, France, and the Netherlands. Now, the United States is still viewed, they say, as, a, as the most powerful nation, but it declined in the most perceptions of respondents for countries with an open travel policies, like a backlash of Trump's travel ban orders. So, they still scared of us. It ain't the fact that they ain't scared of us. Oh, they are still scared of us. But the fact that, 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 that you can't say that we are the best country in the world because we don't stand up to that, uh, to that actual definition of that statement. Now, he goes on to say that job growth uh, is the best. Uh, if I recall correctly, he said, well, 304,000 jobs in January. So let's look that up. Job creation, January. And we're going to see exactly if, if it was 304,000 jobs or uh, is that just something that he's, he made up? And we and you can easily find this out, especially if you deal with stocks uh, and investments. You would know that they got this thing called a jobs report with the Farm Bureau News, uh, and it does show just like right now. It says that it does show continued growth. So let's check the numbers. Is it really three hundred and four thousand jobs in the month of January? So yes, it was. It was three hundred and four thousand jobs in the month of January, but. That has been average since 2011. No, 2012. That is like the average. If you know anything about stocks, you would say that this is around the support line. I mean, the uh, yeah, the support, not the support, I'm sorry, the ceiling. This is the, the ceiling right here. It, 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 it has been generating monthly around 300, uh, 300,000 jobs monthly since 2012. So this isn't like something that he actually had a hand in you know this is just something that has been happening since obama was in office now we already know in 2009 that it dropped down to i mean everybody lost jobs in 2009 over 800,000 jobs was lost and that was the first year of trump's of uh, excuse me of barack obama's presidency so since he had been in office for a year at that time a lot of people attributed uh that to him but he made that back so much that it got up to over 600,000 jobs in uh the like the fourth or fifth month in 2010 but it came back down you know job creation wise not how many jobs but just job creation uh, but it came back down, uh, and, and it, then it pretty much evened out, like stocks do after after what we call a correction. It'll even out after a correction has been has been uh, 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 has happened and has rebounded. Now it's in it's not so this doesn't look like according to this chart that this had anything to do with uh with Trump. It looked like this has just been happening. To tell the truth, if you look before Barack Obama, you know, before the recession, when people lose that job, you actually see it shows from 2004 to 2000, about the beginning of 2008 or the end of 2007, it was around that same created to the same level. About 300,000 jobs was created, almost up to 400,000 jobs uh, every month was being created. Now, we want to look up this wage growth. And, Anybody who know anything about LinkedIn, especially if you are into uh, uh, blue, uh, white collar and blue collar, you into employment, you know, uh, uh, being an employer, or you are an employee looking for a great career, you know, you can use LinkedIn to check wage growth. And we're going to actually check this out with the blue collar who he says who he's fighting for right now. He says that uh, he has made the wage growth grow uh, since then. Now, looking this up, we're going to actually go to the Washington Post, and it does uh, introduce to have an article right here that says, U.S. workers see fastest wage growth in a decade, but inflation takes a toll. Uh, inflation, if anybody know anything about inflation, or if you don't know anything about inflation, um, 
You know what? We're going to come back to this in just a second. We have Stacey Abrams giving her rebuttal to the president's speech. Hold on. We want to check this out. When we asked why he'd given away his only jacket, my dad turned to us and said, I knew when I left that man, he'd still be alone. But I could give him my coat because I knew you were coming for me. Our power and strength as Americans lives in our hard work and our belief in more. My family understood firsthand that while success is not guaranteed, we live in a nation where opportunity is possible. But we do not succeed alone. In these United States, when times are tough, we can persevere because our friends and neighbors will come for us. Our first responders will come for us. It is this mantra, this uncommon grace of community that has driven me to become an attorney, a small business owner, a writer, and most recently, the Democratic nominee for governor of Georgia. My reason for running was simple. I love our country and its promise of opportunity for all. And I stand here tonight because I hold fast to my father's credo. Together, we are coming for America, for a better America. Just a few weeks ago, I joined volunteers to distribute meals to furloughed federal workers. They waited in line for a box of food and a sliver of hope since they hadn't received paychecks in weeks. Making livelihoods of our federal workers a pawn for political games is a disgrace. The shutdown was a stunt engineered by the President of the United States, one that defied every tenet of fairness and abandoned not just our people, but our values. For seven years, I led the Democratic Party in the Georgia House of Representatives. I didn't always agree with the Republican speaker or governor, but I understood that our constituents didn't care about our political parties, they cared about their lives. So when we had to negotiate criminal justice reform or transportation or foster care improvements, the leaders of our state didn't shut down. We came together and we kept our word. It should be no different in our nation's capital. We may come from different sides of the political aisle, but our joint commitment to the ideals of this nation cannot be negotiable. Our most urgent work is to realize Americans' dreams of today and tomorrow, to carve a path to independence and prosperity that can last a lifetime. Children deserve an excellent education from cradle to career. We owe them safe schools and the highest standards, regardless of zip code. Yet this White House responds timidly while first graders practice active shooter drills and the price of higher education grows ever steeper. From now on, our leaders must be willing to tackle gun safety measures and face the crippling effect of educational loans, to support educators and invest what is necessary to unleash the power of America's greatest minds. In Georgia and around the country, people are striving for a middle class where a salary truly equals economic security. But instead, families' hopes are being crushed by Republican leadership that ignores real life or just doesn't understand it. Under the current administration, far too many hardworking Americans are falling behind, living paycheck to paycheck, most without labor unions to protect them from even worse harm. The Republican tax bill rigged the system against working people. Rather than bringing back jobs, plants are closing, layoffs are looming, and wages struggle to keep pace with the actual cost of living. We owe more to the millions of everyday folks who keep our economy running, like truck drivers forced to buy their own rigs, farmers caught in a trade war, small business owners in search of capital, truck drivers and domestic buying workers rig is serving not without labor protection. Bad. That's what they work for. Women and men who could thrive if only they had the support and freedom to do so. See how they use things. We issue. know bipartisanship could craft a 21st century immigration plan, but this administration chooses to cage children and tear families apart. Compassionate treatment at the border is not the same as open borders. President Reagan understood this. President Obama understood this. Americans understand this. 
and Democrats stand ready to effectively secure our ports and borders. But we must all embrace that from agriculture to healthcare to entrepreneurship, America is made stronger by the presence of immigrants, not walls. And rather than suing to dismantle the Affordable Care Act, as Republican attorneys general have, our leaders must protect the progress we've made and commit to expanding health care and lowering costs for everyone. My father has battled prostate cancer for years. To help cover the cost, I found myself sinking deeper into debt because while you can defer some payments, you can't defer cancer treatment. Right. In this great nation, Americans are skipping blood pressure pills, forced to choose between buying medicine or paying rent. Maternal mortality rates show that mothers, especially black mothers, risk death to give birth. And in 14 states, including my home state, where a majority want it, our leaders refuse to expand Medicaid, which could save rural hospitals, save economies, and save lives. We can do so much more. Take action on climate change. Defend individual liberties with fair-minded judges. But none of these ambitions are possible without the bedrock guarantee of our right to vote. Let's be clear. Voter suppression is real. From making it harder to register and stay on the rolls, to moving and closing polling places, to rejecting lawful ballots, we can no longer ig ignore these threats to democracy. To the Republic. Well, I acknowledge the results of the 2018 election here in Georgia. I did not, and we cannot, accept efforts to undermine our right to vote. That's why I started a nonpartisan organization called Fair Fight to advocate for voting rights. This is the next battle for our democracy, one where all eligible citizens can have their say about the vision we want for our country. We must reject the cynicism that says allowing every eligible vote to be cast and counted is a power grab. Americans understand that these are the values our brave men and women in uniform and our veterans risk their lives to defend. The foundation of our moral leadership around the globe is free and fair elections, where voters pick their leaders, not where politicians pick their voters. In this time of division and crisis, we must come together and stand for and with one another. America has stumbled time and again on its quest towards justice and equality. But with each generation, we have revisited our fundamental truths and where we falter, we make amends. We fought Jim Crow with the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act. Yet we continue to confront racism from our past and in our present, which is why we must hold everyone from the highest offices to our own families accountable for racist words and deeds and call racism what it is, wrong. America achieved a measure of reproductive justice in Roe v. Wade, but we must never forget it is immoral to allow politicians to harm women and families to advance a political agenda. We affirmed marriage equality, and yet the LGBTQ community remains under attack. So, even as I am very disappointed by the president's approach to our problems, I still don't want him to fail. But we need him to tell the truth, and to respect his duties, and respect the extraordinary diversity that defines America. Our progress has always been found in the refuge, in the basic instinct of the American experiment, to do right by our people. And with a renewed commitment to social and economic justice, we will create a stronger America together. Because America wins by fighting for our shared values against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That is who we are. And when we do so, never wavering, the state of our union will always be strong. Thank you, and may God bless the United States of America. That was Governor, uh, well, excuse me, uh, Congresswoman Stacey Abrams from Georgia. She just, uh, she lost the governor, uh, uh, the Georgia governor's race, and a lot of people really just call and foul on that. 
And she's looking like she's actually positioning herself for a 2020 run and looks like the for the presidency. I'm guessing what that is. Nah. But I, I hate to change the subject or change why I uh, got you here. But I, I honestly do think this needs to be said because I honestly was waiting for this. And I, I thought it was going to be mentioned and it wasn't. And it's getting, uh, we're over two hours into the show, and I want to actually touch on this before y'all, I, I start losing y'all. With the Flint water crisis still at its highest peak of lead poisoning and health deteriorating in that city, it is amazing that we have not done anything about that. But... For us to not have done anything about that and to actually have not even mentioned it one time during the State of the Union, which is supposed to be strong. With the State of the Union, that's supposed to be strong, but it isn't because we have children dying and living their lives with lead poisoning. And nothing is being done about it. I tried to look up a story on about it just now. The last story that was even reported on the internet was back in October of 2018. This is now February 5th, 2019, and there has not even been a report on Flint, Michigan. I call a catastrophic fucking failure. That is a failure. For that not to have been the main point of the State of the Union, Seeing how the, the Flint water crisis is actually a representation of the damaging water that is going through the United States infrastructure and going into the homes where children have to ingest the only element on this earth that can produce life. And it is contaminated. It is Poison and it is filled with so much lead that their grandchildren and great grandchildren would still suffer from the effects of the lead poisoning. Now, that tells you something, that tells you a lot. It definitely tells me something. It tells me that we really don't care about the situation that we're in, it tells me that we really don't care. About the children at all. Not just the children in Flint, Michigan. But the children in the United States. Because that could have happened in any city. I know because it happened in Corpus Christi. Thankfully. It was taken care of to the point where it won't kill anybody. But it's still horrible water. I know this because I live in Lufkin. I actually work in a restaurant. And when I talk to the, 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 to, to the guests that come in to eat at this restaurant. They have to ask for anything other than water because the water in Lufkin is bad. I happily informed them that the restaurant that I work for has a double filtration system. Meaning that not only is it filtered by the company, I mean by the, the, the city, it is also filtered by the company before it reaches the glass. Meaning that whatever the city didn't get, the company is going to get it. Now, how can a company have more insight on how to protect their guests than a country can have or even a state can have to protect its citizens? But yet the state of the union is strong. We keep saying that we care about what is about our children's future. We want to get them the best educations from cradle to career. We want to enhance jobs. We want to make people better workers. We want to make them more higher paid workers. But we don't even talk about building businesses. We don't talk about when these corporations move to another country so that they can enjoy tax breaks. Why don't we as Americans start our own businesses? Isn't that what America is supposed to be based off of? Why are we trying to get companies and corporations to come to America when we can create our own businesses? And like we're going to look up in a minute, because I do want to find out about this, what we export, what energy that we export. But why don't we think about that? Why don't we talk about the things that are going on right now in a fucking horrendous nature 
like Flint, Michigan. Why have we not talked about the water? We keep talking about borders. We keep talking about walls. We keep talking about jobs. We keep talking about inflation. We keep talking about these things that if we aren't alive, we cannot even talk about them. So now there's children in Flint, Michigan who would never ever be able to make a dis uh, be in a position to make a change because they have been poisoned to the fact that they, it, it affects their cognitive functions. It affects their, uh, their, their, their ability, their, their motor uh, skills, and it affects their, their ability to think. How can they, we expect them to grow up and make the changes that we deem necessary with our society if we can't even get them to be healthy? Now, if you want to lower prescription costs, great, do that. But can we at least aim to stop what is causing the ailments? You spoke of, they spoke of the child who just beat brain cancer. Congratulations. That is a wonderful, wonderful uh, 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 truth It's a wonderful fact I love that she's going to live to see an old age And that she will be able to bear children of her own And I love the fact that she was able to raise money For the fight against cancer But just like we're talking about spreading The cure that was obviously Stole from Dr. CB And trying to Get this AIDS epidemic Taken care of Why don't we do that for more Diseases More ailments more viruses. Why don't we do that? Instead of trying to treat it, we kill it. You want to dump money into a research? You dump re the money into research not to treat the ailment, but to cure the ailment. Because we have to figure out a way to get this lead poisoning out of these children. And we have to figure this out fast before they can actually procreate and pass it down. And then their children move on to other cities and states that have not had that water crisis. But that they wondering why these children are be being born 10, 20 years later with effects of lead poisoning. It's because it's been passed down. And some of these children won't even know what lead poisoning is because it's not like they have scientists in Flint, Michigan. We have yet to talk about Flint, Michigan. Why? What are we afraid of? What, what, why is it that whenever these black uh, men and women were losing their lives up under Obama administration, Obama administration didn't want to speak of it? Why are the white supremacists getting more fucking praise than the people who are actually up in Flint, Michigan trying to stop this catastrophe and trying to rectify the problem that's going on why is it that we can actually sit here and watch this president only bring two guests that was people of color because they was a part of the justice reform and guess what he got them out as if to say he released two slaves that's why the rest of you slaves need to trust me You know, it's a lot about the State of the Union that I wanted to go in on, but all of that pale in comparison to the fact that he didn't mention Flint, Michigan not once. Nobody has mentioned Flint, Michigan not once. And I just want to know why. I just want to know why. Why do we feel like Flint, Michigan isn't up to par with our standards to the point where we need just going to watch them die off? What is actually going on up there? If you are fixing what is going on up there, why haven't we heard anything about it? Why can't I find anything about it on the news? The last story talks about what's changed and what hasn't when it comes to the Flint water crisis. And it starts off by saying, uh, what, you going to put something in the back seat? Oh, I'm sorry, I read the wrong line. <laughs> I'm sorry, hold on. Give me a minute. The, the, the line I was saying, it starts off by saying the state provided free bottled water for two years until April. And now after switching back to the original water supply, the state once again says that the tap water is safe to drink. Companies and charities donated these pallets of bottled water. But it's not enough for everyone who lines up. Now, why is it that they have cut off the fact uh, of the, 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 the bottled water supply? This was back in October. We know that they're still, they're still using the same water pipeline that 
started this problem. Even going back to the old pipeline wouldn't be able to solve that issue. So why haven't we talked about it? Why isn't Michael Moore's film at least being addressed? Why? Is it because he actually holds people accountable? Or is it because they really, really just want to get your mind off of what's going on up there? And I, say, I call shame on black people letting that happen. You let it happen because none of you are talking about it right now. Just a couple of nights ago, you all was talking about a Super Bowl. I did a show on Super Bowl Sunday after the Super Bowl. Didn't mention it too much. Talked about it here and there, but it was my passion now. It was, I didn't watch the Super Bowl. I seen the ending score. But at the same time, I'm trying to figure out why we was all so hyped up over the Super Bowl in Atlanta when children are dying in Flint, Michigan. So, whatever you do at this State of the Union address, you just know one thing. Until Flint, Michigan is actually set straight, the State of the Union would not ever be strong. Because that can always happen to any any other city in America. So with that being said, we actually gonna cut it right there because I'm actually getting kind of upset. And just be watching BOS's radio. We're gonna be doing a lot about this, and we're gonna be talking about this a lot. So until you get tired of it and want to do something about it, it's going to be Flint, Michigan all in your ear. I'm going to be representing it as if I was from there. Anybody that's from Flint, Michigan, you're listening right now, just want to tell you, I have your back. We know that President Trump don't. You know he's too busy worried about his investigation because you notice he mentioned that, but he never once mentioned Flint, Michigan and their water crisis. What was that he said? We need something in cooperation, not war and investigation or some shit like that. I don't know. But that was bull. And until we address Flint, Michigan, uh, ain't nothing else that could be said about it. Flint, Michigan, you're in my heart. And everybody else that th- that deems, that, that thinks I'm wrong, oh, I got two words for you. Suck it. You go up there and drink that water. This is Mr. E, boss of the Southside Bosses. We want to go ahead and pump it back up with some music, some underground music. You know, revolutionary. I would like to bring, keep keep y'all with some of the best uh, 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 conscious music that's out there. Starting with your boy Julian Lennon, and this is Silk Purses here on BOS's Radio. This is the revolutionary album. Check. It's not 
God's designed to marry the same sex To my daughter Jalen Baby, I truly love you I do explain to your mom's in love with a woman Bob and the Sam Cook has been a long time coming Do we really know the value of American money? We in debt to the same corporation that we under Blowing money overseas while our veterans hungry God bless the souls in heaven, flight 9-11 Before we die, Aaron Russo answered that question Sat down with Rockefeller, now they buying FEMA camps Never sign a dotted line, your signature's a stamp they say the worst is yet to come what? Martial law in effect, I'm praying for Ferguson If I'm the people praying. knew the truth, America's really cursed Cur Fuck the judge, I'm claiming my silk purse Fuck Silk purses, silk purses Open your eyes, this ain't the designer version Silk purses, silk purses Open your eyes, this ain't the designer version Open up your mind, maybe then you'll see Money makes the world go round, either you wolf or your sheep Silk purses the defense attorney, Donna West, is trying to take down her credibility in this particular exchange now. And that's because he described him as a creepy-ass cracker? Yes. So it was racial, but it was because Trayvon Martin put race in this. No. You don't think that's a racial comment? No. You don't think that creepy ass cracker is a racial comment? No. Uh, the ultimate goal that these people have in mind is the goal to um, create a one world government run by the banking industry, run by the bankers, run by the bankers. Right? There'll be no more cash. And this is getting me straight from Rockefeller himself. This is what they want to accomplish. He's the one who told me uh, 11 months before 9 11 ever happened. That there was going to be an event. Never told me what the event was going to be. But there was going to be an event. There was going to be an event. And, it's, and there's going to be this war on terror, of which there's no real enemy. And the whole thing is a giant hoax. You know, but it's a way for the government to take over the American people. 9-11 was done by people in our own government and our own banking system banking system to perpetuate to perpetuate the fear of the American people and to subordinating themselves to anything the government wants them to do. That's what it's about. And to create this war this endless war on terror. Endless war on terror. Endless war on terror. Endless war on terror. in the trenches every day trying to get it we live and die for the dollar They say money is the roots, get it Feeling like Omar Epps when Pac fell off the roof Got to live with no regrets, what a real nigga do That's cause and effect, some choose to break the rules I'm blessed with the Jews, use the pain as my fuel uh -huh. Ten youngers on the corner pushing work, call them news Shawty rather catch a dollar, learn that shit in school Want to cry about the bills, rent too much overdue I hear the money calling niggas, it's time to make power moves, power moves. If the streets is what you choose Just know one day your dog may turn on you Your dog may turn on you For that dollar, I'ma let the angels holler, holler. I see it every day These young as I here starving Looking for a better way Unaware of the knowledge I know tomorrow ain't promise I hope God hears calling We live and die for the dollar 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 Single mother struggling with two One in the oven The pressure's on daddy not home all of a sudden She hold it down wearing a crown Can't tell her nothing like a jungle Makes her wonder how she keep from going under Convicted felon lost hope on his last appeal Moving dope to provide his family a decent meal God, is he wrong for surviving, getting it how he lived Doing 34, birdie lock behind the cold steel Working the white man's job, they treat you like a slave You feel the pain on your back without the whips and chains This shit ain't designed for you, it's all commercial game We live and die for the dollar, call it minimum wage Dear God, these crackers trying to kill us Bring down Exodus before they squeeze another trigger Technology brainwashing all my little children Planting bad seeds, corrupting minds by the millions Do you feel it every day? These youngers out here starving, looking 
We live and die for the dollar. 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 I speed through the lust, my lines will blind your vision. The blur that you witness is quickest through my division. Rhymes precision is sharper than the knives on risen. So mind the river as I flow on the mind is liquid. Signs are living as I drop on these minds and bombs. Survive the storm, but you step on the line, you're gone. This is the difference, wanna rip with these lines I'm on. And what is written costs the distance from my lines and yours. Mind the arm, what is scripted, your eyes will fall. And the slumber that you slump under is kind of long. A punishment beast running off a thousand bars. A thousand I'm strong, couldn't run in the bind of storm. When I'm really running and running with mind detours, uh -huh. and the road that I'm on is, is a mind with do. On top of my dicks, and so I'm spitting these lyrics at y'all from the one that's a difficult, lyrical, and lyrical world. The pistols are pause, and I'm fighting the fad just to fight for the cause. Millions involved, but the prison, the lies, and the grips of their balls. Answer the call when I'm calling the conquer revolve. My hunger redolls of primitive bonds. Pistols are pause, and I'm fighting to finish the cause. Millions involved, but the prison, the lies, and the grips of Balls. Answer the call, when I'm calling the conquering ball My hunger and dogs, I'm perfect Being ball. gifted, something stupendous The mic is my interest, I, I write with vengeance And I write, 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 write to my ignorance I write, I write with a sentence, so I'm judged by the light that's admitted I'm like my percentage, and the lyrics is like when they visit At night I'm diminished, as my curtain, they close in the dark Praying for the hardest to choke with the brightest to spark Seeking the sight of the angel or the water from arcs And to the depth of his bosom or the fire with sharks I vibe by the arts, staying true with the things in my heart uh -huh. Some of the things I finish it's never tended to start Blowing my part with the lyrics I reap in my heart Cause the immaculate finally had it with just playing the part Each one that I'm crepping is a different depression From a weapon down a presser to a godly suggestion The common connection One addressing the common selection Though what is common isn't common So it's common conviction The pistols are pause And I'm fighting the fad just to fight for the cause Millions involved with the prison The lies and the grips of their balls Answer the call when I'm calling the conquering ball My hunger indulge a primitive pawns Pistols are pause and I'm fighting to finish the cause Millions of all with the prison the lies and the grips of their balls Answer the call when I'm calling the conquering ball My hunger and dogs are primitive the ball Mike Club No 
man of the pain, believe secret hands. Don't be weary of those that want power. Talk Cause it. on the low, best believe they all cowards. First law of nature, self-preservation. I'm poisoned with the pen, you gotta know I got to face it. QB, that's where I'm from, I rep the slums. Yeah. On the block, back in the days, I made runs. <laughs> all about the cake, I'm stacking all my crumbs. <laughs> no sun, on Instagram with my funds. Nah. Thoughts of a hustler, non-stop with moves. Yeah. EMF black, huh? Y'all get in tune. I don't pay attention to bums that throw subs. Uh-uh. Say that for Jared, you scrubs, I spit slugs. Be a half fat thug, get wrapped in a rug. And your girl got the ugliest mug, I'm so bug. Mess around and get robbed, trying to be the plug. I'm the cure, uh-huh. the antidote, homie, I'm the drug. Secret hymns. Secret hymns. Secret hymns. No matter the pain, believe secret hymns. Secret hymns. Secret hymns. Secret hymns. No matter the pain, believe secret hymns. Yo, 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 yo. Yo, 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 secret hymns. Yo, 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 yo. Yo, 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 secret hymns. Yo, 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 yo. Yo, 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 secret hymns. Got another one. F black. Say cool. Let's go. Let's go. Dumpster. 
I'm only trying to eat, trying to satisfy my hunger. I've been unemployed since I got back to the States. Been fighting overseas, yeah, just for your sake. I suffer every day from post-traumatic stress. The war it plays back in my head, it was a mess. I've seen many men die, die. many men cry, cry. The AK in my hand, I cry out to the Lord, why? To take care of my needs Just the VA helps sometimes But I'm in need of more leads This housing is expensive Proceeding all my wages I swear that I'm a dog Locked up in society's cages You people say I'm lazy But you don't understand It is not easy for a war veteran So I'm crying out loud To the one who dwells above me Hoping by chance that he does look ugly I'm ugly I got pain Don't think you feel it I got this right Be your This is the revolutionary hour.